I grew up with a profound sense of shame. And to me, guilt tells you you've done something wrong, but shame tells you you are something wrong. And I think that's much more profound. Sheila Walsh had a nervous breakdown on national television. Years of hiding her struggles and secrets led her to almost lose everything. I determined that I would be the perfect Christian woman if it killed me, and it almost did. I've carried it around and I've hid it from the light and I've learned how to smile and pretend I'm all right, but I'm tired of running and I'm tired of the pain. It's the wounds we deny that drive us insane. That's Sheila singing about the wounds from her past that almost drove her insane. But she found healing in a brand new life through a restored relationship with Jesus Christ. Sheila Walsh is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, celebrating 70 years of proclaiming the gospel. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Sheila was one of the key speakers with the Women of Faith Ministry for nearly 20 years. She's also an author, a Bible teacher, and a TV personality. During the lowest point of her life, Sheila cried out to God in prayer. And later in this episode, Billy Graham will talk about the importance of prayer. America is caught up in a stream of history that is beyond her ability to control. There is only one power available to change the course of history, and that is the power of prayer. Prayer is exactly what Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham, is focusing on during these tumultuous times. In fact, he's holding a prayer march in Washington, D.C. this weekend. On Saturday, starting at noon Eastern time, Franklin and others will make their way from the Lincoln Memorial to the U.S. Capitol building. They'll be praying for God to heal the brokenness in our country. This event is called Washington Prayer March 2020, and you can be a part of it. You're welcome to join us in Washington, D.C., and it will also be live-streamed. Wherever you are, you can be part of it. You can watch it and pray along with Franklin Graham by going to prayermarch2020.com. Again, that's prayermarch2020.com. It is happening this Saturday, the 26th, 12 noon Eastern. And if you need a link to it, there's a handy one in the show notes. GPS. God. People. Stories. I was born in Scotland to a mom and dad who really loved Jesus, which would not be unusual in America. But in Scotland, where less than 2% of our population even went to church, to have a mom and dad who were very committed to Christ was such a gift. I was very much a daddy's girl. I, I adored my father. But Sheila's father suffered a massive brain injury when she was just five years old. After the injury, his personality changed dramatically. The last time I ever saw my dad alive was turning just in time to see that he was about to bring his cane down on my skull. And he was taken off that day to what was called our local asylum. It would be like a psych hospital nowadays. And he managed to escape from there and took his own life. He drowned himself in the river behind the hospital. That tragedy shaped Sheila's life for years to come. You see, she felt personally responsible for her dad's anger, and in some ways for his death. As a child, I think you take in a lot of information, but you don't process that information very well. What I couldn't understand was, what did my dad see in me that made him hate me so much? And I felt so responsible for the rest of my family. I felt as if I'd brought the house down on all of us. My mom no longer had a husband. My sister and brother no longer had a dad. So I grew up with a profound sense of of shame. And to me, guilt tells you you've done something wrong, but shame tells you you are something wrong. And I think that's much more profound. Eventually, Sheila would start the process of healing from that misguided shame, but it didn't happen overnight. The first step on the journey was when she was 11 years old. My mom took me to hear Scotland's only gospel group at the time, a group called the Heralds. And the evangelist, Ian Leach, at the end said that God has no grandchildren, just sons and daughters. So that night I asked my mom if she would pray with me, and she led me into a relationship with Christ. But the interesting thing is she said something that would be good news to most people, but I heard it through a very broken lens. You know, she said that, you know, not only is Christ living in your heart, but you have a heavenly father watching over you. And I remember making a determination that whatever my dad saw in me, God would never see. So I determined that I would be the perfect Christian woman if it killed me, and it almost did. 
What Sheila's talking about there is a very public nervous breakdown she suffered. We'll tell you more about that in just a minute. But first, it's important to understand what Sheila means when she says the perfect Christian woman. Sometimes you can serve God for wrong reasons. I was faithfully committed to the Lord, but a lot of it was out of fear. And I went to seminary in London to train to be a missionary in India, not because that was something I really wanted to do, but I thought it would show God how much I loved him, that I would do something that frankly terrified me. Sheila did not end up going to India to be a missionary. Instead, she went to work for a ministry in Great Britain called Youth for Christ, which has ties to Billy Graham. Sheila even sang at a Billy Graham crusade in the 80s while her Christian music career was beginning to take off. Eventually, Sheila moved to the United States and began co-hosting the 700 Club TV show with Pat Robertson in 1987. Despite all her success, though, Sheila was deeply depressed. And in 1992, she couldn't fight it any longer. And she fell apart, all while the cameras were rolling. After I'd been hosting the show for five years, I, I think I kept a pretty tight wall up around my heart. But one morning while I was interviewing a guest... And I asked her my first question and she didn't answer. What she said was, you know, Sheila, you sit here every day and you ask us how we're doing. How are you doing? And I didn't expect it. And I didn't have time to pull that wall up. And suddenly I began to cry. And I, I hadn't cried in years because I think I thought if I start, I'll never stop. And I was right. I couldn't stop. And she was embarrassed. Our studio audience were embarrassed. And eventually they threw to a break and I took my microphone off and I walked out the studio and I locked myself in my dressing room. And I really felt that my life was over at that point. I called a friend of mine, dear friend, called Dr. Henry Cloud. And I said, Henry, I think I'm losing my mind. And he, he asked me some questions and he said, no, you're not, but you need some help and you need it quickly. To get that help, Sheila checked into a psychiatric hospital the very same day as her breakdown. Prior to that day, Sheila says viewers would probably have described her as having it all together. But inside, I was still a scared little girl, afraid that anyone would see the real me because I assumed the real me was, was the person my father hated. All those wrong ideas about her dad finally began to unravel during her stay in the hospital. As she cried and prayed, she began realizing some truths about Jesus she'd never known before. I discovered that even though no one could come and see me for at least 72 hours and I couldn't leave, that the Lamb of God himself checked in with me. I remember writing the very first night in my journal, I never knew you lived so close to the floor. I discovered the truth of when the psalmist David wrote in Psalm 34, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And I think for me that was a huge turning point to realize I was loved just as I was for nothing that I brought to the table. Sheila was in the hospital for about a month, and toward the end of her stay, the staff encouraged her to go do something outside of the hospital to help her begin transitioning back to what her normal life would be. I was told I could go to a movie or a mall, and I said, no, I would just like to go to church. It doesn't matter what denomination, if it's a Bible-believing church. So on that last Sunday, a young nurse took me to a church. I don't remember the whole sermon, but I remember the pastor saying, some of you feel as if you're dead inside. And he said, but I want you to know that Jesus is here. You don't have to get yourself out of this hole. You just have to call on his name. And I, I didn't even know what the particular habits of this church were. But at the end, I, I ran to the front of that church and I lay face down before the cross. And words that my grandmother used to sing to me when I was a child, two lines from the hymn Rock of Ages, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. And I, I guess I finally got it that I'm not the good news Jesus is. She called on the name of Jesus and he answered her. After she got out of the hospital, she began to rebuild her life with Christ as the foundation. But Sheila will never forget how important her stay in the psychiatric hospital was. She says it helped her discover what she calls the companionship of brokenness. People who love Christ but don't have all the answers. Uh, as my friend Brennan Manning used to say, those whose cheese keeps falling off their crackers. <laughs> and it was just, I discovered the liberty that comes through vulnerability through being known. I think most of us long to be known, but we're so afraid because we think who we really are at our core is not acceptable. But when you've had everything stripped from you and at your most naked and vulnerable and bare, you discover the overwhelming depth of the love of God, it changes everything. For example, Sheila says God's love 
means your history does not need to dictate your destiny. That, she says, is one of the most important life lessons she's learned since her nervous breakdown. So often we think that, you know, if we've had a hard childhood or, or even if we've made mistakes ourselves in the past, that that impacts how we can be used by God in the future. I've discovered that that is not true. And I've also discovered that you get to come as you are. Sometimes people think I have to clean my act up and then I'll go back to church. Or once I stop doing this or stop doing that, then I'll begin my relationship with God again. I want to say to people, no, no. The gospel says, come as you are. That's what happened with the prodigal son when he turned his face toward home. He discovered his father had always been looking in his direction. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. God loves you, and He's ready to begin or restore a relationship with you right now. As Sheila Walsh said, you don't need to clean up your act first. Jesus will help you become the person He wants you to be after you begin a relationship with Him. You can learn more about this at findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. We mentioned earlier that Sheila Walsh once sang at a Billy Graham crusade. Well, Mr. Graham's wife, Ruth, played a very important role in Sheila's life, too. And Sheila will talk about that in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. How can we go on unless there's a renewed emphasis on prayer today? Billy Graham. There's no doubt that we as a people are in serious trouble today. If there was ever a time that we needed to be on our knees in prayer, asking God to save us, it is now. What a glorious thing it would be if millions of Americans would avail themselves of the greatest privilege and the greatest power this side of heaven, the privilege and power of prayer. God answers prayer. Your heavenly Father possesses everything. He can supply all your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. With God, nothing is impossible. No problem is too difficult. No burden too heavy for his love. One of the most amazing things in all the scriptures to me has been how much time Jesus took out for prayer. If Jesus needed to pray, how much more we need to pray today. The scripture says, pray without ceasing. This should be the motto of every true follower of Christ. Never stop praying, no matter how dark and hopeless your case may be. Never stop praying. An important reminder from Billy Graham, and one that Franklin Graham is living out this weekend in Washington, D.C. We want to remind you again that Franklin is holding a prayer march this Saturday on the National Mall beginning at 12 noon Eastern. He will be asking God to heal our country, and he will be joined by thousands. You can join too. You can watch on your live stream or join us in D.C. The website for all the details is prayermarch2020.com. Our guest on this episode of GPS is Sheila Walsh. She remembers a time when she was in crisis, and Billy Graham's wife, Ruth, shared the hope of Christ with her. It was right after Sheila was released from the psychiatric hospital. Ruth Graham invited her to spend a couple of days with her at the family home in the mountains of North Carolina. We sat by the fire and drank tea and talked. She gave me a book that I treasure to this day. It's called Beside the Bonnie Briar Bush. It was written by a Scotsman many years ago, and it has these wonderful stories of of redemption. But that evening when it was time to go to bed, she showed me my bedroom and then she made me a cup of tea and brought it through and she said, may I read to you? And I remember thinking, it just was one of those moments in my life where I thought, sometimes you get to meet Christ in flesh and blood. We know that no one takes the place of the Savior, but sometimes someone ministers his love in such palpable ways. And that's always what Ruth has been to me just a physical expression of the love and mercy of God. 
What a touching story there from Sheila Walsh, and we appreciate her sharing it as well as the rest of her story here on this episode. She also let us use some of her music, so thank you for that too, Sheila. And thank you for listening. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. GPS God People Stories is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. We